ways to start. All right. So this is let's just talk everything where essentially, you know, I just talk about anything and everything in this particular podcast. Um, but we're talking about the topic of women pursuing men. So we we have that dynamic now, right? Where there's a lot of women we see that are now proposing to men. I've had a woman a woman come up to me and ask me for my number. And again, I felt like the I felt like the chick. I you know, I had to I had to sit up. I had to, you know, I, 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 I kind of, kind of had to make sure I went, you know, I was like, was I, was I, was I leaning in a certain way? I didn't know what happened, but she asked me for a number, you know, and, 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 you know, that was the whole thing. And, um, you know, I made a post about it, but Raven, she, she came, you know, underneath that post, she had a lot to say. And so I want to crack the, the conversation, I guess, open, right. Let's crack the conversation open with the perspective of, why are women seemingly starting to pursue more today? Let's start there. So why are we st- why are we seeing that more so today than let's say maybe back then or whatnot? But yeah, Raven, if you want to talk about that first. You know what? First of all, you keep putting a lot of emphasis on this Raven. <laughs> <laughs> like Trey know exactly what he be doing, y'all. He really be poking at the bear. And he I think he knows now he's figured it out. Like, ooh, I'm gonna say this, but I'm gonna say it this way, and it's gonna get Raven's <laughs> attention. And whatever she doing, she's gonna have a lot to say. Cause I will send him an essay of a response. And then when it starts getting personal, I have to switch it over and hit the DM and be like, you know what? Like we really be going at it. He think he got something with yourself. Keep on, keep on, Drake. <laughs> but no. So uh, I think for one, it depends. We all know each generation is different mm-hmm. when it comes to pursuing the opposite sex. So uh, I I believe it was you, Car. You say you're 31, right? We're the same age, mm-hmm. so we're 90s mm-hmm. babies. Mm-hmm. Trey. You kind of a late 90s baby, so don't be shaking your head yet. <laughs> so we kind of <laughs> up there, like early 90s. <laughs> but no, like, so, and Kara, you correct me if I'm wrong, because I know each person is different, even though we could be from the same generation. But for me, growing up in the 90s, I viewed things where when it comes to pursuing the opposite sex, I've seen where men will in the traditional way approach a woman of interest and start a casual conversation i've heard or witnessed conversations where once there's an exchange in numbers you know the guy wants to take you out on a date but you have Mm -hmm. to go through the parents first let alone if a guy wants to date a girl you got to go through the daddy first Mm -hmm. daddy like he wants to know everything you got a job you got a car with mm-hmm. you driving, with your socials, like they want all the details. <laughs> so, like, yeah, because if anything happened, you got to deal with the daddy bear first. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, even before then, like, none of us was born during this time, but we've seen things in movies and plays and stories, music videos, where way back when, you know, dating wasn't how it is today. In other words, meaning dating was actually getting to know each other, taking baby steps you go for a walk on in the park walk on the beach go have a picnic ask questions anything you want to know there's no hiding or sugarcoating who you are as an individual opposed to nowadays dating is not dating dating is netflix and chilling and Mm. we all know what chilling means Mm. and we're all grown so i'm gonna just say it you want me to come over and Netflix, but you really ask me to come over for that late night after sex. Like, mm-hmm. no, that that's not dating. Just to say you hit it and quit it. But in other words, you're trying to say, oh, you dated that person. Tell me about me if we dated. What's mm-hmm. my favorite color? Mm-hmm. Who's my favorite singer? Who's my favorite actor? Like, what's my Zodiac sign since we dated? That's not dating. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, I think... I I'm 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 just gonna be flat out honest, like God honest truth. I am old school. However, there are some things the new school does that I kind of be like, okay, I wonder like, hmm, maybe if I try it. But again, I'm like hesitant because of who I am as a person. I want a guy to pursue me. Why? Because for one, it shows a level of respect. Mm-hmm. Why does it show a level of respect? It shows a level of respect because it's like that simple phrase: when you see something. You like and you want it, you're going to go get it by any means necessary. 
Like I commented on the post where I mentioned to Trey, they'll send a friend or maybe Trey said it. They'll send a friend over to come get the phone number for them because they're too mm. coward or too scared to come and get it themselves. However, if that does happen, someone else might view it as, oh, wait, I thought you like, let's say Cara liked the friend. But Maya went over and got the number. But somebody else who doesn't mm -hmm. know what's going on will be like, why Maya's getting Trey number? Like, mm -hmm. Kara's into mm -hmm. him, not Maya. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. Maya's just helping her sister out. Like, she's just mm -hmm. being a good friend. Mm -hmm. So don't just automatically assume the worst. But... Now, I also don't believe that there's anything wrong with a woman pursuing a guy to a certain degree. And trust mm -hmm. me, that degree is very small in my book. But... <laughs> I mean, it, it it all goes into how the person was raised. We have some men who don't do it, one, because they are, everybody want to be a pimp all of a sudden. Everybody want to be players and have, have all of these women to their names. Like, that's not cool. Yeah. That's not cool because mm -hmm. you might actually have a good woman by your side, but you want to clown around like Dono and Daffy Duck. Like, you're going to lose out on your precious jewel yeah. for a pile of chicken shit like come on now i'm keeping it real for real because i've seen so much i've experienced so much to the point where like that's why i told trey i was like you know what this is it's a personal thing but i don't mind sharing it now mm -hmm. which kind of goes back to the mental health thing even though like that call we had last time was you know slightly different but i mean just to piggyback to the mental health thing to get to where i'm going mm -hmm. mentally I had I had an ex, my very first boyfriend of all guys I've dated, my very first boyfriend. Like, you know how your parents say, you say, oh, I'm in love with this person. Your parents are like, you don't know what love is. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what love is, love mm -hmm. at first sight or mm -hmm. like, you know, when you love somebody. Right. I'm just that type of person where I love deep. If I love you, I'm giving you my all inside and out. The good, the bad, the ugly, the worst, all of it. Mm -hmm. But when that's being taken for granted. I feel a certain way, which is why a lot of people say, damn, you was have to be the woman's fault, though, of why she changed as a person in order for a guy to pursue her. Maybe she's taken what happened to her, you know, into perspective and be like, OK, how can I learn from this? How can I grow from this? How can I move on? So just to give you like a little bit of the ends ladies my first love my first real boyfriend sexuality changed so those doors but because he's my first boyfriend and oh i'm so happy i have a boyfriend and i'm loving him and you know i'm hearing these things but i'm like okay people just speaking out of jealousy or people say things just to mess with you to mm -hmm. get a reaction mm -hmm. i brushed it off but then as time went on, I was being shown things as well. Gay websites with profiles, his pictures on it. So what do I do? Once I hear it from the friends and so-called close friends of his, like it got to the point where family, my family is now telling me and showing me these things. So what do you do? You're going to believe family before anybody else. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let me nip this in the bud. Let me go to the source. The source is him. I asked the question. I was stared like eye to eye, staring him down. Is this true? This is what's being told to me. This is what I seen at the same time. This is when my space was switching to Facebook. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people can make a fake profile of somebody else, like the TV show Catfish. Mm -hmm. I probably was like, I thought, OK, I didn't know it then. But to say it now, I'm like, maybe they're just trying to catfish, mm -hmm. like catfish me or whatever. But. I asked the source, is this true? I wasn't given a yes and I wasn't given a no. What happened after I asked that question? It's like the door was shut in my face. So I was left having to answer all of these questions that everybody had. What happened between y'all? Or why y'all don't talk? Like mm -hmm. my phone calls were being ignored, my text messages were being ignored. I went with this guy to his prom. It was my turn for my prom couldn't reach him so I said okay I still speak with the family like the family considered me their daughter-in-law mm -hmm. so let me reach out and be like hey my you know ex-mother-in-law like can mm -hmm. you ask him see what he says just to so I could kind of figure out what I'm gonna do 
I got a response from her through him. The answer was yes, he'll take me to prom. The closer we got to prom, hadn't heard from him, seen from him, nothing. So I got stood up. However, even though this is where I was wrong in the situation, I did move on eventually to somebody else, but I wasn't really over the first one. So mm -hmm. the best way to put it was like, I didn't intentionally make the second guy my rebound guy, but I had to move on in some kind of way. And this is where the mental part come in. It got to me mentally because once I moved on to the second guy, that person found out who my ex was, what happened, because he asked me and I wanted to be honest, mm -hmm. not knowing we were both going to be together and run into the ex out in public one day. But it caught me off guard. So I kind of like, like pushed the person out of the way and was like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe you in front of me right now. And then I'm with my new person. Like, this can't be happening. Like, is he going to say something or what? Mm -hmm. I felt bad because my guy at the time I was with, it made him feel a certain way because mm -hmm. of my reaction. Like, mm -hmm. he took me pushing him out of the way as, oh, this is my ex. I want to be with him. You, you, I'm done with you. Bye. That's not what it was. I hadn't seen this person in almost a year, year and a half months. I have yet to get an answer. So this, like, the timing couldn't have been worse of running into him. Was the talk had? It's 2023. This happened in 2011, 2012-ish. Still no talk. Still to this day. Oh. However, I see on social media, you living your happy life with your new, you know, your new sexual life. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have nothing against gays. Anybody a part of the any of you know any person part of the LGBTQ plus community, I don't mm -hmm. have nothing against those people. They haven't done me anything to where like if you're trying to hit on me, then that's where I draw the line. Mm -hmm. But like I'm all for whatever a person wants and needs to be happy, but you're somebody I had a moment in time with. Like we had we were in the process of writing our story and you just shut that book down. Like it wasn't nothing like slammed it on the table and left me mm -hmm. hanging high and dry. Mm -hmm. So mentally. And when it comes to the pursuing part, my guards are up. They're very high. So it's hard to knock down those walls. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've dated other guys as well, but again, this is where I'm wrong because when you have that one, everybody says you never get over your first. There's always going to be love there on my end. I'm not going to speak for him, but there's always going to be love there on my part. Mm -hmm. Always will be, regardless. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the next person in line or whoever it may be, don't take offense to how I may react or respond to certain things. Mm -hmm. Because it might not necessarily be because of what you're doing and saying in that moment. It's just something you may have said or something you may have done. It just triggered me and yeah. took me back to a time in my life where, like, I was, I felt alone. I was by mm -hmm. myself. So mm -hmm. I was never really given the opportunity to close that chapter in my life. Like, I have a lot of questions. Like, Trey always says he have a lot of questions mm -hmm. after you say one mm -hmm. thing. So, like, I have so many questions I want to ask. Like, you were with me, but nobody knew who I was. Mm -hmm. But your family knew of me. But outside of your small, close circle of your family members, mm -hmm. no one else knew who I was mm -hmm. until I made myself known. Yeah. But once you got into the other relationship, when it was outed, when I confronted you about it, oh, you have this blasted for the whole world to see. Mm -hmm. So... I would feel a certain way. So when it comes to pursuing somebody, the best way I, the best thing I can say and the best way I can put it is when you pursue someone, make sure it's genuine. Mm. Like don't just waste mm -hmm. someone's time and, and uh, pretend to pursue that person just to fulfill whatever desire it is you have in that moment. Mm. Because me for that moment to fulfill whatever desire you have and once it's fulfilled you you like you throw me away like a piece of trash mm. be genuine don't just take it for granted because you're just messing up a precious jewel for somebody else to clean up now there are some guys who don't mind doing that at all mm. Mm -hmm. 
Like I have a lot of respect for those guys because they really go through a lot. Same thing yeah. with us as women. Like we mm -hmm. go through a lot. Right. Like, don't laugh at me, y'all, but I'm old school too. So I quote Trey, no, I quote movies, oh, movie yeah, lines I know. and everything, songs and all. And like in the uh what it was a Tyler Perry play I seen years ago where they were singing a song and they quoted, I think it was Patty LaBelle, whoever it was, where uh they said a, a clean up woman is a woman who takes all the love a girl leaves behind from the from the previous relationship or something like that. Like if you gonna take me this precious jewel, this this red beautiful rose, and you gonna pick me petal by petal and throw me away, why do that? Just mm -hmm. leave me, leave me where I am. Leave, leave me where I was planted to grow. Because mm -hmm. the longer I'm sitting there and I'm growing and I'm blossoming, somebody is gonna come along, cut that stem, and say, okay, let me, you know, let me join, put you in the mm -hmm. same flower pot is me put it that way you're joining two opposite flowers together to make this beautiful new creation mm -hmm. if you don't want to do that then keep it moving because mm -hmm. all you're going to do is you're drying me out instead of watering the flower you're drying me out if that makes sense mm -hmm. now trey says somebody tried to approach him and it made his made him like was i standing a certain way i bet all his chest hairs came out too but <laughs> i'm just saying like there's nothing wrong with a woman pursuing a guy, except you just have to make sure you're reading the situation in the right way. Mm -hmm. Don't overthink it, because when you do that, then that's going to make the person second guess, second guess themselves. Like, is this somebody I want to, like, entertain? I'm going to put it that way, entertain? Mm -hmm. Or am I serious about what I'm seeing and what I'm wanting? Because... I can't really say that happened to me as well because there was someone years ago where we met in college in a in a class we had together and he would come to class and then after a while he just stopped coming. And I was at work. He had no idea where I worked. He just randomly happened to be a customer. And when he when he came in and I saw I put the face with the voice when I saw him, I was mm -hmm. like, wait, I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I work here you're a customer like what are you doing here <laughs> like we both know what the other person is doing here but we hadn't seen each other in like a little minute yeah so he he, he just straight up asked hey can we swap numbers i would like to take you out i said okay we're talking texting went on like maybe two or three dates and they were don't get me wrong he was he was a true gentleman like he was really really sweet however I would say as time went on, there was like, I don't want to say a disconnect. We just lost contact because I ended up moving back uh, back to my hometown. And then at that time, I was getting like homesick as well. So I was kind of like back and forth. So I ended up moving back home and we lost contact. But thank God for Snapchat. Snapchat became a thing. Oh. And we found each other on there. Mm -hmm. And since then, we kind of been like back and forth, standing in contact. I think the last time we may have seen or like interacted at least was since, let me see, it was like 2014 when this all first started. So we hadn't seen each other from 2014, maybe since COVID of 2020. Once wow. COVID came, it's like we got back in contact through Snapchat. Like, thank God for social media these mm -hmm. days. Like, oh, yeah. honestly, mm -hmm. because like, don't get me wrong. He he was a true sweet guy. He was very true and genuine and how he treated me, not just as an individual, but as a woman. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm old school. He opened the door for me. He closed the door. Like, if my hand went to touch that door, what you doing? I was like, yeah. oh, my, my bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, he asked mm -hmm. things that I like. What do you like? What do you want to eat? First date. I didn't know. I was like, I don't know. Just surprise me. No, what do you like? I said seafood. Took me to a seafood spot. I was like, oh, I could vibe with this. But again, time went on. COVID came around. Found He found out I was back in town. We linked up, hung out, and we talked for like texting wise. We were talking for maybe a month and a half or two months maybe. Lost. I don't want to say lost contact again. We just fell off. Mm -hmm. But we both acknowledge because of things we went through in our, our past and how we were pursued and how things worked out or didn't work out, like how things happened. We both said in that moment, like, we're not focused on jumping into another relationship because we have to recover from what we went through. Mm -hmm. So 
we both like we're, I still consider us friends. I'm not going to speak for anybody else, but I still consider him a friend. Mm -hmm. Every so often we communicate, check in on each other. Now, was I catching feelings? Yes, of course. What girl wouldn't catch feelings when they see something they like? Yes, I could feelings, but I had to respect that he said verbally out of his mouth. He's not focused on getting into another relationship. Right. The same story I told you guys about the first ex. He knew about that as well. Like, I'm I'm a straightforward person. I told him. And he respect that. Like, he knows about the first. He knows about the second guy. And there was something else that happened. But Trey knows about that. But that's not that kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. But he knows about, in total, I have three exes. He knows about all three. So he understood why I want a relationship. I want to date someone where when I date you, after, a, let, let's just say we, we put a timeline, after two years of dating, we start talking the next steps, marriage, you know, building yeah. together, like building this yeah. lifestyle, mm -hmm. children, everything. Like, that's what I want. So mm -hmm. he respected, he understood it. I respect that what he's doing. He knew I was still in school. I'm almost done now. School mm -hmm. didn't work out for him. Like school, college is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But he had his fallback plan. So with his fallback plan, like it doesn't allow the time to like really hang out, really interact and engage with each other. But I mean, there's still that level of respect because yeah. of how he pursued me, which is how Trey started off this conversation. Mm -hmm. The way he pursued me, the way he presented and showcased his level of respect to me as a woman and as an individual, because I always joke around with my guy friends and be like, okay, you're treating this girl, this girl, and this girl this way, but how would you feel if you have your own daughter or right. somebody treats your sister or your mom in a negative way? How would you feel? You wouldn't like it. So why do it to somebody else's, somebody else's mother, somebody else's daughter, sister, cousin, aunt, grandmother, whoever. That's me. Absolutely. So I didn't say a lot. I didn't preach. Trey got that face. Uh -huh. Like he like uh -huh. keep on, but, <laughs> nah, but I'm, I'm the type of preacher. I know when to sit quiet now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, nah, but, but you, but you, you, you said what was needed to be said. And I know that you've been, you've been wanting, I know, I know, I know you've been wanting to share this, even though I didn't know you. I didn't he, been, he been poking at the bear y'all. So I was like, he, ooh, he, he getting me to that point where I was like, I didn't know. I say I, this, I tell this story to people, but Trey is the first person to really get me to talk about it publicly. I love there you go. It. I, I said love, that's what I'm saying. He's I'm the first back. one to get me to talk about it publicly. I'm taking back. I, I did not think you were gonna go there with, with 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 you know with that guy and all that, but you went there. I mean, like I said, I could preach. I you didn't catch it when I said that there was something else, a whole nother story for another topic, but we're not gonna get into that one because one what I'm not not gonna do is i'm not gonna mention that one and then give him a reason to go out there showboating like he's some type of famous person or something because he not far from it he oh, yeah. for all i know at this point in time he could be living at the bottom at the bottom of bikini bottom whatever's under bikini bottom he could be living there for all i care so it is what it is yeah we exactly we're not giving the time but 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 right. i appreciate you i appreciate you and i appreciate the the transparency in that um obviously again seeing the the aspect of going back to the question you being someone that desires that level of pursuit from a man i love that and and again i saw both uh, maya and kara's head shaking hard when you said that they both were just you know and so <laughs> I, I i love that aspect of it i love that you all i wish we had somebody on here who actually differed but i think for the most part i think everybody kind of does but kara you seem to be itching well, I've got, um, I mean, like, I have a perspective of, I do want to be pursued by the man. I do have that old school, um, that old school, like, I want to be desired, like, you want to be desired, you want to be the one that, that they pick. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I have, like, I have a kind of a strong personality too, like, where if I do, if I do like you or like... I will let you know um, in a way. And I guess this started when I was younger too, because when I was five years old, I uh, had a crush on, on a boy and we were in a bus and I got 
like it was a crowded bus. Um, one of the, the friends wanted to switch places with me. And I saw that it would be the, the boy I had a crush on. So I was like, okay, cool. So I sat next to him. He was talking to another girl. And in that moment, I decided to kiss him. So I went and I kissed him. Now, I think I was trying to kiss his cheek, but I ended up kissing his neck. Oh. He, as you know, as you should at five yeah. years old, um, mm-hmm. he was speaking <laughs> to you and he pushed me off the off the bus seat. Oh, gosh. So um, I had to get up and, you know, sit back down next to him. I was embarrassed. But at the same time so I was like you know what this is not how this is not how this works mm. you know you can't you can't make the move they gotta they gotta mm. make the move right wow. but later on so later on in fifth grade you know I had a crush as well and they had a locker next to mine um, and my best friend convinced me to write a secret admirer note I didn't write it she wrote it and I put it in his locker, mm. but then like, I'm impatient and I just, I, I'm nosy and I gotta know stuff, right? So mm-hmm. he's in my class, he has a locker next to mine. So I <clears> think <throat> I'm being slick. And so I go up to him and I say, I say, hey, somebody left a note in my locker for you. So I, I put it in your backpack. Did you get it? <laughs> so <laughs> he goes to his backpack. He goes to his locker, he goes to his backpack, he reads it. It's a secret admirer note that's like giving clues as to who likes him. And he's like, did you write this? And my face gets red, but I could honestly say no because my friend wrote it. <laughs> so I was like, no, oh. I didn't write it. <laughs> so um, yeah, so nothing happened with that, but like, Again, it was another lesson of like, you know what? I don't think I should be the one <laughs> to be making these, you know, mm-hmm. uh, first moves. <laughs> and so, yeah. Uh, so I honestly, I want to be pursued. I was like with my ex-husband. He was mm-hmm. the one that started the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in a line at Chick-fil-A at my school. Um, and he... He started the conversation, asked for my number. Mm. We exchanged numbers. Um, I had a Facebook at the time. We became Facebook friends on the day we met. Um, I had a Spanish uh, quit, like a Spanish, a speech that I had to do in Spanish the next day. So I was like preparing for that. And as we were walking separately towards our dorms, he stopped and was like, hey, do you want to go to uh, after we eat? our food and stuff do you want to go to the gym and walk around on the track and talk and I told him no at first because I had a speech in Spanish that I was preparing for and he said well I don't really care um if you talk to me in Spanish or you give me your whole speech I just want to have a conversation or like I just want to hang out with you I whatever (laughs) so I was like okay so I ended up texting him. We did walk around and we talked and wow. all of that. So, yeah. Um, but then, you know, as things happened in, in our marriage that ended, like he, he did end up cheating on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was just a lot of like, uh, I wasn't the person that he wanted. Um, there was just always, always, uh, comparing, comparing to other women. Like it was like, I want you to be like this. I want you to be like, you should look like this. You should act like that. Um, you know, just, you're not good enough as you are basically. Um, and, uh, like part of me at that time, like I was, you know, like insecure and still in like, I guess we talked about in the mental health thing is like, you know, the insecurities and just the, the people pleasing and the trying to be somebody for somebody else. And it was like, I was trying to be what he wanted me to be a lot of times, even in the, like the marriage, but then it came to a point where I finally found myself 
And that was where I was like, um, there was sometimes when I would just be like, why did you even marry me if you don't find me attractive? Mm. If you don't find me that, like, if you don't, you know, why did you marry me? Yeah. And, you know, he always had some answer, but it was never like, I don't know. Yeah, ne- yeah never reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so now just after that, um, I did, uh, it's it's been two years since the divorce. Uh-